Hey guys, Steve Clayton here, and uh, you might see my dog in the background too, so he's gonna he's gonna help out. Um, thanks for taking a couple minutes here. I think uh, I wanted to talk about some pretty important things that um, I think you should be concerned about, whether you you know invest in any kind of course from us or anyone else or no one. Um, I just think it's you know obviously we've spent many many years, almost fifteen years, trying to get people to basically achieve their their dreams really of building online businesses and you know because of that you know we kind of we see a lot <clears throat> you know and i i certainly don't have all the answers um but you know i've been around for a long time um i'm 55 now which is staggering and you know i've been in corporate i've been a serial entrepreneur um so i've seen a lot I've seen, I've built a lot of businesses. I've helped thousands and thousands of students and seen uh, lots of successes, lots of people who have had, um, you know, sort of interim failures to, before they get to that success. And I think that the chances are that I've either, you know, I've been where you are now, certainly, because uh, I've been on that journey a few times, or I've seen other people in exactly the same situation that you're in. And I think that certainly we can you know in looking at all those things we can we can learn some lessons and we can kind of you know just make sure that we're doing make sure that we really understand how to best set ourselves up for success because i do think that there are some very fundamental things that you can do um that no matter what kind of a business you're trying to build or for that matter no matter what you're doing whatever your goal is um, there are several things that um, that you really should be should be thinking about and I think that, you know, you, you, you know this, right? Some people achieve incredible success, however they define or you define that. And others seem to sort of, you know, kind of be aimlessly kind of on autopilot um, and kind of go where the wind blows them, go wherever the companies tell them. And, you know, that that's fine for, for many people. But I think if you're if you're watching this, you're probably one of those folks that wants to be the former, you know, somebody who can achieve um, some pretty big business and, and life success. And again, whatever that is defined by you. But for most people, I think, again, who are going to be looking at this, it's um, I want to build my own business. And I think mindset is is pretty much the most important thing, you know, um, your current reality, what you think of it as. And I'm not I want to be careful here because I'm not talking, believe me, I'm I'm far and away from some new age kind of guy i'm not talking about you know some kind of like the secret thing or you know think about it and it will manifest <laughs> that's that's not what i mean i think what i mean well i know what i mean is uh, uh you know i think one of the big, best gifts that my parents ever gave me was that i came out of my childhood thinking that pretty much anything's possible you know and i think that this is a pretty common attribute I see in, in most entrepreneurs, they expect that they will be able to do something. Um, and most of the time, that is a huge strength because they're willing to dive in and try things that others won't. Uh, there are some times when it can result in underestimating what what risks there are and maybe being a little naive um, and not having realistic expectations. But far and away, I think it is way more of a strength than it is um, a weakness. And I think that if you expect average, if you sort of think that the default is average and that, you know, well, uh, you know, I won't be able to do that or, oh, it's crazy to think that I'm going to leave my job and, you know, go out on my own or, or whatever, that would never happen to me. Um, you know, if you expect that, then that's what you'll get. And if you expect success and behave in a, in, in the way that successful people behave, which we'll talk through a little bit, I, I think it's reasonable to expect that you'll you'll be successful. So what more specifically can we can we talk about um, to get you to you know kind of be able to to really tee things up for for 2022? Certainly the first thing is to actively seek radical change. you know like I mean go out of your way to say, well okay, I didn't I didn't accomplish what I set out to do in 2021 or 2020 or, or whatever. And by the way, that's okay as well. You know, just by virtue of the fact that you're thinking about it and considering 
making changes and considering setting these kinds of goals and watching this video, you're like way ahead of 99% of people out there. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Um, so, you know, it, it's pretty important that you do something very different in 2022. Doing something radically different is definitely a surefire, surefire way to change the outcome, you know, that you've been having prior to this. And it's perhaps unreasonable to expect that you would, you know, uh, make a big change without getting some kind of radically new approach to, to the, you know, the, the issue. <coughs> um, so, you know, like everybody, by the way, I've been suffering with getting sick this year, too. I'm fine now, um, but still have the lingering cough. And. You know, so a lot of a different way of saying, you know, actively seek radical change is to get out of your comfort zone. You know, and it's it's really, you know, Aiden likes to talk about this a lot and I agree with him. You know, it's where the magic happens is probably not in uh, the same thing that you've been doing for 10 years or five years or whatever, or even last year. It's when you get out of that comfort zone and you explore other other ways of doing things and you make some radical changes that, you know, things things happen. I think people are really afraid of failure. And I think it comes in a part of in, in, in a couple different ways, just the general fear of failure. I think the other thing that we see is that people um, have this dream of like, you know, owning their own business, being a successful entrepreneur, and they're unwilling to risk the dream by actually trying to make it a reality. Let me explain. If they were to fail, at trying to make it a reality, then they might have to say, okay, well, not only did I fail, but this dream is unrealistic. So I, I lose the dream. So a lot of people are afraid of losing the dream because it sort of sustains them. It you know makes them happy to think about it and dream about it and fantasize about it. Um, but they'll never reach it because they're afraid you know, of, of failure. And I think what you have to understand is that um, I'd be shocked if you embarked on trying to accomplish that dream and you didn't fail. I mean, you know, <laughs> you, you're, I've certainly failed uh, and will continue to do so. Um, that's for sure. And, you know, it, it's just part of the journey. And you should look at it as like, you know, just checking off the boxes, you know, um, uh, on, your, on your path to, to building your, your business. Um, so, you know, the things that you've done in the past or have or haven't achieved, they really don't have any bearing on, on what you could, you could achieve in, in the future. And in fact, I would argue that, you know, having some failures, um, you know, you've learned from those and you're, you're set up for success later on. I think something that people don't do um, at all is to really understand their why, you know, and by that I mean, you know, I mean, everybody wants to make money, you know, and whatever and get the freedom that money can buy, you know, um, not just the freedom from worrying about money, but geographic freedom, time freedom, and we talk about that. But <clears throat> I think it's critical to really understand what's driving you. Because then you're, you know, you're sort of point your ship in the right direction. Um, you know what's at stake. And you're more willing to try all these different things because there is, you know, such this, this fundamentally important thing that's at stake. You know, and, and so, you know, I, I think it's it's all about being introspective. And people really suck at that for the most part. They don't really know what drives them. Most people are on autopilot. Um, and so you're like, okay, well, why do you want to start an online business? Well, I want financial freedom. All right, well, why do you want that? Well, I want to be able to give my kids. Why do you want to give your kids that? Like, what's driving? What at the end of the day, right, is your recipe for happiness? What is absolutely like after I ask myself these questions like seven times in a row and I go seven layers deep, what is really driving me? And you might be surprised at the answer if you really spend the time to do something like this and you um, and you have to be honest with yourself. And you could also, you know, incorporate uh, your spouse or partner or whatever, or friends in these conversations. But it's really, really important because I think that the people that know what's at stake, the people that know why they are after you know, certain goals, um, it really makes a big difference in their ability to, to accomplish them because they, they know what's at stake.
I think the other the other thing is, um, and you know, uh, I, I think that my I have to apologize to most of the world because I'm gonna I'm gonna treat soccer a little over simple over oversimplify soccer quite a bit um <laughs> you know for me um like football uh, and i mean american football is very complex you know you've got you know all these different plays and these this analysis and you know there's a lot of number crunching that goes around and there's and there's huge you know players have to study these playbooks and the quarterback is calling out the plays and everybody knows where they're going and then there's a, a an expectation of what the defense is going to do if you're uh, right for me soccer is more about all right we're going to get the ball down towards the other end of the goal uh, towards the my opponent's goal we're probably going to do that on the wings you know because it's easier to bring the ball down on the wings right and we we need to score i don't know who's going to score but what we are going to do is we're going to put the ball in the middle once we get down there because putting the ball in the middle is when good things happen, <laughs> you know. Um, so we bring the ball down, we put it in the middle. Somebody somehow on my team, hopefully, is going to score. Um, when we when we start at the other end of the of the field, uh, of the pitch, <laughs> and we're bringing it down, we don't know who that's going to be. We don't have to know. We don't have to have this halt. But what we have to do is keep putting the ball in the middle, and. This analogy I have used my whole career, my whole life, really. And it's what I'm trying to get across here is that you don't have to know how it's all going to work out if putting the ball in the middle, if it feels like you're putting the ball in the middle because it's going to set yourself up for success. Let me give you two examples. One of them is might seem like sort of a shallow networking thing. When I was young, just starting out as a computer programmer, I... Um, uh, I, th there was a call from the vice president of sales and marketing at this company that I worked for. And he needed a tech person to come out and meet with a customer who was having some issues with their computer. Nobody wanted to do that because I was like, I don't want to go out and deal with customers. Who needs that crap? I volunteered because I knew this guy was kind of an up and coming star. And frankly, I wanted to get to know him. I wanted to network with him. So I volunteered. It was a successful trip. I enjoyed it. Got a chance to meet him, talk to him, travel with him. And uh, we didn't become good friends or anything, but he knew who I was. And we would say hello. And over about, I don't know, five or six years, you know, we had this acquaintance. He went on to become the chief executive officer for a, um, uh, an exciting company. Um, and lo and behold, I became the chief information officer of that company. <laughs> and you know, one of the reasons, right, is because I didn't know that was going to be the plan, but I put the ball in the middle six years before, right? And then I was able to hit it into the goal because I put the ball in the middle, but I didn't really know what was going to happen. <clears throat> Same thing with our China office. We agonized over this, and now I forget exactly how long ago this was, 10 years ago, something, maybe a little less than that. Um, we agonized over whether we should open a China office. And we had some general ideas as to how it might work, uh, but it's a huge pain in the ass. And finally, we had a conversation about it. And I was like, you know what? It feels like it's putting the ball in the middle. We, it feels like the next step for success. It feels like something a big company would do. It, it just feels like we're putting the ball in the middle. So we did it. And it has paid for itself, I mean, time and time and time again. And you know, for quality control, for negotiating with suppliers. Uh, we use it for our, our private mastermind, uh, shares the same office uh, with us there. So time and time again, this is an important strategy that I've used in business and one that I encourage you to do. And so if you're considering something, I don't care what it is, networking with someone, an investment in some kind of training, um, you know, whether or not to expand a product line, I don't care. Ask yourself, does it feel like I'm putting the ball in the middle here, even though I might not really understand how it's all going to work out? If so, do it. <clears throat> I think writing down, you know, all of these things, um, having a real clear vision and focus. Again, you don't have to have a seven-year plan that, you know, every single minute of every day is mapped out. That's unrealistic. But having clarity about what finish looks like, or at least stages of finished, having clarity about your vision and your focus and your why, um, really help you figure out if 
this feels like you're putting the ball in the middle and that sort of thing. And I encourage you to write it down because that's that's important. Um, and it also helps you to stay focused. You know, um, if you think about, <clears throat> excuse me, if you think about um, constantly you're thinking about what finished looks like, which I talk about all the time when I'm managing people and when we're when we're sort of doing some planning, I'm like, okay, all this is great conversation, but what does finished look like? Because that is what's going to allow me to stay focused and make sure that every single thing that I'm doing, right, um, is is getting me towards finished. And you can even change tactics. That's okay, as long as you haven't changed, you know, your ultimate goals and what finished looks like. <clears throat> um, you know, building an, in, an inner circle is is critical, and it can come in all sorts of different flavors. You know. Um, it um, it can come in in partners. It can come in um, investing in a, a an online course because then you you know you could build a community like we have in in Kibo, um, and it, it can come in a mastermind group, um, family. Um, it doesn't really matter, you know. But surrounding yourself with people who believe in you and what you're working to achieve, um, and then also I think. I think also having a group of people that are together working towards some kind of a common goal um, is just absolutely invaluable. So it's something that you should absolutely uh, consider. <clears throat> I think, um, you know, adopting a there's no tomorrow attitude is pretty important. Um, that should say 10% of 2022. You know, we're all going to be doing that for. The next six months. What year is it? What? Um, yeah, you know, I mean, you're like one twelfth of the year is is almost gone, right? Or gone, and you know, that's happened in a blink of an eye. So, how are you going to use that remaining ninety some odd percent? You know, and I think staking out twenty twenty two as, hey, this is the year, man. You know, there is no tomorrow. We are going to make this happen. Um, that sort of sense of urgency and, and you know, kind of drawing that line in the sand will help you stop with any kind of procrastination. Um, and I, I, think it's, I think it's really important to understand that miracles happen in the now and they don't happen in the later. So you just need to do it. And it's, it's something that I, I think is one of the keys to success. <clears throat> so... I really encourage you to think about these things um, as you're, th and I, again, I don't care if you invest in training with us, somebody else, nobody, I, I don't care. I just want to help. Um, and if you think about these seven things, it will help. If you do all of them, it's great. If you do five of them, that's great. I mean, just really, really consider all of these things and think about how you could, you could implement it. <clears throat> I think keeping it simple is, is key. You know, I think that's the biggest secret. I mean, if you think about the things that kill startups, you know, it's it's usually, you know, having have a lot of money um, to, and a lot of things, times in e-commerce, that's, that's inventory. You know, that just kills you. Um, and it's something that even, I mean, honestly, even in our big e-commerce business that, you know, we millions and millions of dollars a year, we sell in... in um, thousands of stores across the country and um, capital is still tough you know when when Walmart calls you up and says yeah we want to carry your products it's like okay good but shit now I mean like I got to come up with a lot of cash to place those orders and all um, and it's all good right it's a good problem to have but um, it, it can kill startups marketing skills you know people not everybody's very good at copywriting and writing ads and websites and I mean I, I'm horrible at, at designing websites and things like that and you know um, traffic you know talking about Facebook or whatever I mean um, when you're talking about paid advertising it can be really tough you know as, as a good example it's getting tougher and all these platforms become more highly specialized they typically get a lot more power um, but along with that power comes complexity and so you know it unless you have experts in all of these different areas um, we've we've had to start that in all of our companies. Instead of having a paid search guy, you know, we need to have an AdWords guy. We need to have an Amazon PPC guy, a Facebook guy. I mean, it's 
you know, you just you have to specialize because they're so it's so crazy. Same with sort of technology stuff, you know, um, uh, you know, web hosting and, you know, uh, APIs and integrations. Uh, sometimes it's the legal stuff that gets you, you know, contracts, um, uh, you know, b- dealing with banks and reseller certificates and and then slow results is the other thing. I mean, I've seen that a lot um, where if people don't get an initial like sale, um, you know, it, it, it definitely hurts them. And, you know, that's why we think that Kibo Clips is, is your best bet, honestly, in 2022, because, you know, I, I think it's, I think, I think the key is this, that, you know, you don't, you get rid of all that, you keep it simple and you get rid of all of those things. You know, you don't have to do Facebook ads. You don't have to have capital. You don't have to create your own product. You don't have to rely on Amazon, no PPC there. You don't have to deal with China, traffic issues, no competition, you know, no, no big capitals, uh, investments, um, high profit margins, rapid results. You know, if you look back again on all of these bad, these things, capital is not an issue. You don't have to have any of these marketing skills. You don't have to deal with, you know, paid search and Facebook, you don't have to deal with technology, you don't have to deal with legal administrative and you get fast results. And so, um, and in addition, there's a bunch of other pros, you know, the building an asset you can own and you can sell and, um, and it's the springboard, you know, to a, to a finish that's dramatically different. You know, I mean, you can, you can have a hugely successful business based just on the Kibo model alone. Um, but then, you know, that expands into, into other things that, you know, obviously we teach you and things, but, you know, we're talking years from now. Um, and, and that's great. I mean, it's fantastic. You can, my dog is helping. Um, I think, you know, this whole three door thing is another thing that, that Aiden's quite fond of. And I've, I've sort of become a lot more fond of it as well. Um, because I think we see this absolutely, you know, quite a bit. Um, and it's that people just quit really early, you know, so if you can imagine a scenario where, where, you know, you're standing in front of one door and I can tell you that there's a million dollars on the other side of that door. You gotta, you gotta get through it. You got 24 hours to do it. And, you know, you kind of hover above the room and you can see uh, for sure. Yeah. Okay. There is a million dollars there. You know, a hundred percent sure that the money's there, but you got to figure out how to get there. And that's kind of like what is going on with these business opportunities. You know that million dollars is there. I mean, because, I mean, there's been tons of other people that have done it, you know? So you know it's there, you just have to get through the doors. And so people, you know, what do you do first? You know, hopefully you try the door. <laughs> you just go up and open it, but you find out it's locked. So what do you do? Well, I mean, it's interesting. You know, you'd, you'd think that most people would try to bash the door down. But it's funny, I, I gotta say that a lot of people they go right up to the door, they turn the handle, and they go, eh, eh, uh, it's, it's, it's a rigged system. It's not going to work. It's there. I, I'm done. Maybe it'll be easier somewhere else. That's kind of the first sign of discomfort, and they retreat, and they look for something else. They look for something easier. And, and you know, they, they, don't, they don't take the little minimal discomfort of trying to break the door down, you know. Um, now, some people, they do bash the first door down. And some people just get in there and they crash right through. And some people get to the million dollars then, right? But most people, eh, they, you know, they start to see, okay, you know what? I crashed this first door. I couldn't see. There's another door in front of me. I couldn't see this other door. Um, gosh, how many other doors are there that I got to get through? You know, I know there's a million dollars on there. I just had to crash through one door. But here now I've seen the second door. And then here's, and this is the second round of filtering out, you know, and then these people quit. And they go, ah, forget it. I've failed and, you know, I'll fail again and, and that kind of thing. But, you know, I tell you, the, the, the people that are successful, they go through that second door and maybe even a third door and maybe even a freaking fourth door. But they get help. They figure out. They go to the forum. They go to Sean's office hours. They go whatever it is or some other course. Again, I'm not trying to pitch just our course here. Um, and they get help and they go, yeah, how do I get through this door? How do I get through this door? You know, because all in all, all in all during this, they use those, you know, the seven things that we've talked about and they go, I know what my goal is. I know I want to get to that million dollars. I know it's possible. Of course it is. I mean, lots of other people have done it. Um, and so they, you know, they managed to knock all those doors down and it's, it's really, really important, you know, um, because I think, 
you need to you need to really be introspective. You need to understand how your mind works. You need to understand what's going on in that psyche um, that's happening, and you need to understand that you might fail through one, two, three, four doors, and and that's okay. You know, you're it's part of the process. It's part of that journey. But you know, it's on the other end. You absolutely know that. I mean, it, I've been talking to people like you for 15 years and telling you all about this and i I, it that there is no it can it can it cannot be up for discussion that that million dollars is is there or not there then we don't have anything to talk about so you know i mean it's just another way to look at it um pretty good representation probably a lot better than the three door one because it's a lot simpler but but you get the idea it's really really critical So at the end of the day, you know, again, I don't care whether you're investing in our course, someone else's course, you're doing it on your own. I don't care what it is. And I don't care if it's business or personal or please. The one thing I can tell you is don't give up on your dreams before the magic happens. And don't be afraid of risking the idea of your dream, uh, you know, to make it a reality because you have to. You absolutely must. And if you fail through the first door, the second door, the third door, that's okay. It's part of the process. And it doesn't mean you have to give the dream up. Listen, I hope this was helpful. I really, really do. I certainly wish you would join us uh, in the Kibo Code um, this year. I think this is the year to do it. Um, I, there's not going to be another opportunity, uh, frankly. Um, and so this is the year to do it. Um, but again, even if it's not us, I hope you, uh, you don't give up on your dreams. Good luck to you. Thanks.